So you're doing the repetitions and you're attaching your activity to a meaningful activity. All the things that we've talked about on this channel to optimize brain rewiring after a neurologic injury. But believe it or not, there is so much more you can be doing. And in today's video, what we're gonna go over are three things that have solid evidence that help with brain rewiring that are what you might consider a little bit unconventional or maybe a little bit outside the neuro rehab bubble. So if you are someone who has had a neurologic injury and you are in the process of restoring your movement and getting that brain rewiring, in today's video, you are gonna learn three things that have the evidence to support their positive impact on brain rewiring. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist with over 22 years of experience helping people recover their mobility and their independence after a neurologic injury. And I've taken all that experience and dove deep into the science to create a toolkit specifically designed to help people restore their mobility and their independence after a neurologic injury. And that is all part of our Rehab HQ membership program. If you wanna learn more about our membership programs, sign up or schedule a discovery call to see if one of our programs is right for you, you can visit rehab-hq.com. But now back to today's video, and that is three unconventional ways or opportunities that you might be able to take advantage of to really take your brain rewiring and restore your movement after a neurologic injury. And habit number one is what we're gonna call novel movement challenges. And what a novel activity does for the brain is it kind of surprises the brain and kind of almost primes it or gets it to wake up and want to rewire around that activity. So some simple ones that we like to do in rehab is walking backwards, maybe walking in an unfamiliar environment of course, making sure that you're safe, walking or standing on an unfamiliar or kind of like an unpredictable surface and activities where you're crossing midline. I cannot stress enough how impactful this is on neurologic recovery. When we start working on activities that cross midline, it's like a whole new world opens up with my patients. So you can do something as easy as marching and doing an opposite hand to knee tap. Or if you wanted to do something a little bit safer, maybe you're in the earlier stages, just standing still and reaching for objects across midline. Now, many of these exercises we've done on this channel, but we're kind of putting those exercises into like broader categories to maybe help you guys decide, are those the right types of exercises for you to be doing in your recovery stage? Okay, so walking hand to knee or standing still in a corner, which I like to add a little bit more safety, reaching across midline or tapping your foot across midline. Now, why does this work? Because repetitive activities are beneficial, but repetitive predictable activities kind of makes your brain, for lack of a better term, or just to keep it simple, kind of go to sleep, doesn't get as activated and it kind of becomes just like a passive participant in the activity. And what we really want is we want an actively engaged brain that is noticing all these new things and really trying to grab onto these new, new activities and rewire them into a new neural network. And what we know based on the evidence is that when the brain is presented with something unexpected, that is prime time for getting what we call like brain reorganization. Brain reorganization is just kind of how the brain kind of maps out certain neural networks. And of course, that brain reorganization shifting a little bit after a neurologic injury is absolutely beneficial to get our brain to kind of rewire around those damaged areas. In big picture, that's kind of what's going on when your brain is rewiring after a neurologic injury. And sure enough, I wanted to make sure there was some Evidence, even as many of you know, I've said this several times, stroke research, even the best study is still kind of a poorly designed study. 
just because they're small sample sizes, meaning a lot of, not a lot of people enter these studies, there's a lot of heterogeneity, meaning the population of people that are enrolled are very different. And for a multitude of reasons, they're not super strong, but there was a study published in 2022 in animal models that when they were presented with kind of novel, unexpected activities, they got greater synaptic plasticity, meaning just more neurons were connecting with new synapses or connecting with new neurons. And what I had mentioned earlier, they were getting that reorganization in the brain. So more of that was occurring when you were, when these animal studies, these animal subjects were presented with novel activities. Again, animal study, but what I'm presenting to you in this video are things that I have learned through experience. And it is nice to know that in some degree, there are scientists that are researching these things and they are finding kind of some evidence to suggest that they do work. But crossing midline, walking backwards, these are like absolutely day one activities for someone who's ready for them that I will incorporate into someone's in-person sessions, but also into their home exercise program. And if you want to read that animal study for yourself, link for that will be in the description below. The other habit that I know works, and I absolutely encourage all of you to try and incorporate this in some respects into your home exercise program or into the activities you're already doing, and that is music and rhythmic movement. And the easiest way to do this is you can download a metronome app on your phone and just try and clap or march to the beat of that metronome. But if you guys like music, you can absolutely do this to specific songs that you really enjoy. The goal is, is to try and time your movement with the beat of that music. I've done this personally with patients. And again, it's one of those things that absolutely does work, but there's also evidence that backs this up or supports this as an absolutely beneficial way to get that movement retraining that you're looking for after a neurologic injury. And the reason this works is because the motor areas of the brain and the auditory areas of the brain, auditory being hearing, are very close in the brain. And when they link up together, they know, because they've done the studies on this, you get more activity in the motor cortex. So when you time your movement to an auditory beat, they see more excitability in the motor areas of the brain. Now, this is something that I frequently use with people that have Parkinson's disease, and there's a lot more stronger studies even, because there's usually, you can do bigger studies with people with Parkinson's disease that does support that it improves movement quality. Now, to keep it simple, you don't really need to understand uh, Parkinson's disease, but it involves an area of the brain that's very involved in motor planning. And so these people that have Parkinson's, they have difficulty with motor planning, specifically starting movement and stopping movement. And I'm not going to get into all the technical details of that. It has to do with dopamine and the area of the brain, again, that's affected with Parkinson's disease. But when they help, when they give people a metronome and they have them move to the beat of the music, many of their movement-related symptoms improve. But I've also seen this work with people that have had strokes as well. And I know many of you are going to ask, because you ask this a lot in the comments, and I do believe, and this is just my opinion, that this would also apply if you have MS, especially if you have known lesions in your brain. That is kind of like brain damage, and you are trying to get some neural rewiring around that area. So absolutely, I think it can be beneficial to do activities where you're linking up the auditory system and a movement. And again, just a brief review of the literature. There was a meta-analysis, which a meta-analysis is a study of studies that are looking at the same thing or have like a similar intervention. There was one of these meta-analyses done on music therapy and stroke rehab. And again, there's many limitations to this study, so definitely read it for yourself. But they do believe that there was a net positive effect by incorporating activities based on a study that looked at a bunch of studies 
And they found that it did improve movement or motor function. And again, that study will also be linked below. I definitely recommend that you read these studies for yourself, especially the discussions. And then the third and final habit that we're going to go over today is visualization. And again, I've talked about this in a ton of different videos, but it is definitely on my top three list of kind of unconventional or less utilized interventions that we do in the neuro rehab world. Visualization is definitely in that top three. So there have been several studies that, in my opinion, confirm to me, along with my clinical experience, that visualization does have an impact on brain rewiring, meaning that just in your downtime, sitting and visualizing both sides of your body moving with a normal movement pattern, certain motor areas of the brain do have more activity. So we have something called functional MRI studies. That's how they can see if a brain activity is kind of uh, active, it kind of lights up. And they do get more of this activity on functional MRIs when someone is visualizing a movement. Now, it's important to note that it does not replace movement, but it definitely enhances it. And in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be posting a video on the evidence of visualization and some other studies uh, involving interventions in that area. And absolutely, visualizing in your mind doing an activity does have a lot of value. So what does this mean for you? And what do I kind of do when I'm seeing someone in person is it means that if you're doing a passive activity or if your therapist is moving your arm or your leg, that is a prime opportunity to be looking at your arm, watching it move. Don't get fixated on the fact that your therapist is moving your arm. And actually, the way I set up many of my exercises and how I provide some of the manual cues that I provide is I try and kind of make that as stealthy as possible, meaning that I don't really want you to see how much I'm moving the arm. I want you to see your arm moving. And it is it absolutely works. I can go from passively moving someone's arm to what we call like active assisted, meaning I'm getting some engagement almost within one session with most patients. I won't say that happens with all patients, um, but if someone is in the first year, I am usually pretty confident that during that those passive activities, if I can keep someone's attention to the activity, that we will very quickly go from passive, meaning I'm moving the limb totally, 100% to active assisted where the patient is doing a little bit of the movement and I'm doing a little bit of the movement. Of course, this is the most effective in that first year where I have the most confidence that by doing passive activities with someone and making sure that they're watching their limb move every single time with some sort of an active or an excitatory command, like straighten the arm, straighten the arm, lock your elbow, punch punch, some sort of like an excitatory command, that combination absolutely within a couple of sessions with most, not all, generally speaking, in the first year, will be able to move from passive to active assistant. But the key component of that, in my opinion, is the visualization. So even if you're not in therapy, when you're at home, Visualize the arm moving as much as possible. Visualize yourself walking as much as possible. Visualize yourself reaching into a cabinet. But beyond that, when caregivers are stretching you, visualize yourself doing the movement when they're moving your arm. If you're a caregiver, make sure that the person you're helping is watching the arm move. This is extremely challenging for people that have neglect. If you have neglect, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to go into it in depth in this video, but that is one symptom or it can be one potential problem after a stroke. If you have neglect, it's even harder to get someone to maintain attention to that limb. But for you caregivers, that's absolutely prime time for 
getting that awareness on that side of the brain, at least getting that awareness on that side of the brain by having someone look at it. But then beyond that, we do have evidence that supports that it will also activate more of the motor areas of the brain on that involved side. But in case you don't believe me, I'm going to link a couple of studies below that looked at visualization activities and how that helped to improve functional movement. To read those studies for yourself, they will be linked in the description below. Now, be mindful of the fact, if you guys have been around for a while, I used to not really like put a lot of these studies up on the channel or talk about research studies. They all have huge limitations. Most notably is the size of the participant, the number of participants that are enrolled in these studies, the length of the study, how long the intervention was done with the participants, and then of course the heterogeneity within the participants that were enrolled in any one specific study. And I've said this before, but that's why meta-analyses are probably better. And again, meta-analyses are studies looking at groups of studies, because at least then you're broadening out the the patient population, but they're still, most of the time, they're not blinded, meaning that the patient clearly knows what kind of an intervention that they're getting. And many times the measurement tool that they're using has some limitations in it as well, meaning if they look at like functional movement, a therapist is actually looking, does this functional movement improve? And yes, there is a scoring system, but there's still some subjectivity in that. So there's little things like that in almost every study that's looking at some sort of an intervention related to a physical therapy intervention for people that have had a stroke. So keep all that in mind. But I will link the two studies that support the mental imagery and the effect that that might have on functional movement, functional recovery. But more importantly, I selected these three unconventional, kind of outside the box, big picture habits because they're things that I've used and I've seen them work on the patients that I see in person. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. Uh, list anything below, leave a comment about maybe things that your therapists are doing with you that has been really effective and you found it's really taken your movement to the next level. I would love to know what you guys are doing. Also within each of these categories, do you spend time walking backwards? Do you spend time with visualization? If so, do you find it to be beneficial? Do you do anything related to music where you're moving to the beat of the music? Have you found that to be beneficial? I want to know. I learn from you guys as much as you guys learn from me. So leave your experiences in the comment. Not only will I be learning, but also everyone in this community might be able to learn something that they can add to their home exercise program. And then don't forget, as I mentioned, we do have a membership program again, where I've taken my 22 years of experience and done a deep dive into the current evidence as far as what is the most effective interventions or therapy activities for someone to restore their mobility and their independence after a neurologic injury. And I've put that all into our membership program that you can access 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can really curate your own home exercise program and give you full ownership of getting there. To learn more about our membership programs and to sign up, you can visit rehab-hq.com. I enjoyed spending time with you all today. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.